One of the things I wanted to talk to you about today, because a lot of your your clients are probably customers, customers, patients, that's the word I'm looking for, are a lot, you know, the age group can be a little bit older sometimes because that's people who are fluent sometimes are older, not always. Um, but for my, my clients, um, I'm interested in explaining to them what you see across the board in terms of people who kind of navigate their 60s and 70s successfully and what their habits are versus people who navigate or struggle through their 60s and 70s and what their habits might be? That's an excellent question. And my job satisfaction has shot through the roof doing this. And it was a desperation to get out of the normal fee-for-service type of practice that, that encouraged me to do this. As a result of not having thousands and thousands of patients and five minutes to spend with each patient, I now have quite a bit of time I can spend with my patients. And as a result, I've gotten a lot better at treating all the diseases that I normally see. The better I get at it, the, at, at treating uh, the, the complicated diseases, the less I have to refer out. Sometimes I can just call a colleague and get the answer and the treatment. Sometimes I have, all I have to do is look it up and, uh, and get comfortable with, with doing a treatment that normally I would just refer out yeah. to. So, but to get back to your question, um, one of the things that I was hoping and has definitely come true is that if you navigate health and illness correctly, you can have a significant, significantly positive outcome. It has gotten to the point where I have estimated, and this is just my pure estimation, that you have control over 80% of your health. Wow. Uh, the, 20, uh, the, the other 20% are just random things that happen, accidents, uh, cancer that comes out of the, out of the blue, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. But things like maintaining your weight, exercising in such a fashion that you can reduce or prevent high blood pressure, diabetes, and the ultimate things that happen from that, which can be strokes, heart attacks, et cetera, and undergoing routine physical exams and screening tests you can pick things up much, much earlier, such as prostate cancer or colon cancer, where it can make a dramatic uh, difference in your life. Do you find that people are resistant to the recommendations? Because a lot of times I feel like, and I, I may be incorrectly, that a lot of physicians just want to treat the symptoms. They don't really want to say, listen, dude, you got to stop eating Oreos for dinner, right? Right. They, they are more like, well, here's some you know, Lipitor or whatever that cholesterol medicine is, do you find people are more wanting, give me some medication versus, no, there's a root cause here and it, it requires you getting off the couch? Well, I, I hate to sound so cynical, but when the average physician, and this is true, this, this, these are true numbers. I have spoken with various internists who work for a large hospital system that are seeing 40 patients a day. Yeah. That's, that's seeing the patients dealing with labs they've ordered, dealing with reports, uh, coordinating care. I don't know how they can possibly do it. And so basically you've got a few minutes with each patient and the strategy becomes, what is the quickest thing I can do to get out of the room and go on to the next patient? Right. So it is much easier to say, here's a prescription for Lipitor for your high cholesterol than it is to talk about diet and weight loss and the things you can do to improve your health and perhaps avoid some medication. Um, and so that's just a, a, a situation that physicians have found themselves in, in a typical fee-for-service environment. Yeah, and I don't think that's not getting better, right? The, this, the, no, it's getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah, the requirements of major health organizations and or uh, physicians groups are not helping that no. cause. No, and, and nobody is happy. The physicians are stressed, they're not happy. The patients are certainly not happy. Uh, when I started, my practice, I insist on an, a comprehensive annual examination, and pretty much all my patients will do that. One of the biggest problems in conventional medicine is also compliance. Uh, patients are not motivated to go in for a physical if they're not prodded to do it. Yeah. They're not motivated to follow up on recommendations. If the physician, him or herself, is, is not 
an example of good health, yeah, you're less likely right to listen. The to cardiologist that weighs 350 pounds, and that which happens. I've seen, by the way. Oh, I know, <laughs> I know. Uh, um, okay, so when people sign on, they inherently are more likely to adhere to my recommendations since they're paying a fee. They're, mm-hmm. they're right up front; they're already committing to me, and once. I gain their trust, which actually doesn't take very long. Right. Then uh, we do a physical, we identify issues, we discuss them, we figure out how to resolve them. And what I find is that people can come in and sometimes it can be unstable. Problems are either have not been previously discovered or, or have not been addressed appropriately. Once you reach a level of stability, even in very complicated patients, you can have a, a period that I call a plateau for a considerable period of time. And I have even had either sicker or older patients who can dramatically improve their health by doing some of the things that you're alluding to, which is staying in shape and mm-hmm. exercising and, and that sort of thing. So I don't know if I'm right about this, but I'm, you and I share that we both do yoga. And, you know, as people age, I know balance is an issue because balance, first of all, if you fall over, you break a hip or... In, whatever, you, you hurt yourself badly, especially if you're older. Um, if you could pick one or two things that somebody, because I think one of the intimidating things for people is, well, I'm not going to the gym for an hour. I don't want to bike 70 miles. You know, some of the more extreme things people like you do. <laughs> um, but uh, but they, they can do something, right? It's not a matter of commit 10 or 15 or 20 minutes a day to yoga or to some kind of stretching and or a push-up or two or whatever can make a significant difference. Am I wrong about that? No, when, when you look at the data, the threshold for some kind of exercise is pretty low. Like you're saying a push-up here and there. That, that's a little, uh, obviously you're being a, a little joking a bit, but yeah. it's true. I mean, they're talking about maybe doing 15 or 20 minutes of, of exercise uh, a few times a week. I think that's a starting point. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's the end all. Sure. Um, I believe that balance and there's physical balance, but there's just there's also just life balance is, is very important. The ideal mixture as far as physical conditioning is a combination of some weight-bearing exercise and some aerobic exercise. Um, yoga actually can incorporate a little bit of both of those things, depending on how aggressive of a yoga class you do, but you're usually, you're usually using your own body weight for the weightlifting part of it. Um, but yoga is so much more than that. It's a matter of clearing your mind, and uh, a lot of the maneuvers involve balance. Now, which, you know what every guy that's watching this is saying right now? They're like, I'm not... I'm not doing yoga. Well, then there's always naked yoga. Well, but <laughs> <laughs> depending on who you do that with, right, yes, right, yes, yeah, yes, it, yeah, it yeah, be a yeah, problem. yeah. But we we won't go. This is <laughs> this is PG. Um, but yeah, a lot, I mean, I've spoken to numerous of my friends, you know, in their 50s or whatever, maybe in their early 60s, and talked about yoga, and they have back problems, and they have this problem and that problem, like. 20 minutes of yoga a day, I promise you, is going to go a long way towards eliminating a lot of that stuff. And nah, I'm not, I'm going to go in the gym and lift some heavy stuff. Right, right. Yeah. You go in the gym and you see guys that can lift the Volkswagen. They have a big gut on them yeah. and skinny little legs. Right. Um, but yoga is, is such a diverse field. Um, you can do very light yoga that, that you can do a, a chair yoga. Uh, all the way to Bikram or hot yoga. Goat yoga, which oh, goat is a real yoga. thing. Yes, I've it seen videos of that. Yes. yes. So you can do as little or, or as much, but it does involve uh, some element of, of balance and stretching um, that is very, very helpful. 